Our first performer is coming out here with an original set. So please make welcome all the way from Sydney, Eliza Newton. <laughs> How's it going? So I just moved to the country and it's weird what you missed because I was expecting to miss so much stuff about the city. I wasn't expecting to miss public transport, but I really miss the weirdos. I miss the spectrum of humanity that you see, you know. I was catching a ferry a little while ago. This was in Sydney. I see this dude tearing down the docks and I look to the end of the pier and I, I can see the ferry. It's like three metres away. I look back at the dude. He obviously sees this. He's just legging it. I mean, he is pushing people out of his way. Just, ah! He gets to the end. He leaps over the water, makes it onto the ferry by doing a barrel roll, gets up, adrenaline pumping, just like, <laughs> to see the ferry was coming in. <laughs> Another weird thing when you move to the country is you start to hear this a lot. I'm not a racist, but... <laughs> It's nice, it's nice to get a bit of warning that you're about to hear something catastrophically racist. <laughs> that is the only thing that follows that sentence. It's never anything good. There's always something ridiculous like, you got your blacks, you got your warts, you got your oranges. <laughs> Trump <laughs> truly is the garbage fire of people. Yes! Feel. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Yes! <laughs> she knows it. And I'm, I'm not just saying that because he looks like a flaming bag of Cheetos that's been put out with a shovel. That man, does anyone here follow American politics? Yeah, man, I'm trying. It's beginning to feel a bit like Christmas. No, focus. It's beginning to feel a bit like binge watching The Fall of Rome set to yes. Benny Hill music. Just like, I don't know what is going on over there. Um, but yeah, you meet some interesting people in the country. I've met someone, I've met this dude, who doesn't believe in evolution. What? Does not believe in evolution. Ironically, he looks like the missing link. <laughs> but yeah, totally, like to his core, does not believe in it. He thinks the world, the earth, is 6,000 years old. It's what he believes. I tried to have a conversation with him. I was like, so carbon dating, dinosaurs, Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll tell you about that, mate, right? Because God put dinosaur bones, he hid them on the earth, right? To test my faith. I'm like, yeah? You're testing my faith right now, mate. I've met people that don't believe in racism in the country. Like, just do not believe racism exists, which is insane because reality. I mean, you can see it everywhere from advertising to systematic oppression, but it's in those little insidious things, racism, you know, the things that we barely notice, like company names. White lady funerals? <laughs> Coon chins, come on. Uh, I want to tell you a story about my mate. She's a really cool chick. She's the most positive person I've ever met in my life. She's like, if negative is here and optimistic is there, she's like, here, yeah, she's just off the chart. And um, she was in this really bad bike accident a few years ago. She crashed into a brick wall, just went supermaning over the bike, face to the pavement, knocked out all her teeth. And like, poor chick, terrible. And she's telling me about it and she's like, oh, everyone's gonna think I'm this like wild, badass biker chick now. I'm like, no, we know you're an uncoordinated push bike rider. You're like, we know you, man, we know you. She's like, oh, you know me so well, thanks. Like, she's just positive. Um, and it gets her into trouble, though, because she only sees the positive in people. And she met this guy on Tinder and just fell head over heels for this dude. And it took her, like, a long time to realise that he was a crackhead. <laughs> so she's telling me about him, she's like, He's so mysterious. <laughs> she, she can't get hold of him for days. <laughs> He's so like unconventionally attractive. Yeah, yeah. two teeth. <laughs> but I love her. I love her. You know, she's she's a positive chick. Um, and when your friend goes through something like that, she was so heartbroken. You got to take him out. You got to get him out of the house. Just take him out and really try and help them to drink themselves a new asshole. <laughs> That is all you can do. We're at this bar, we're just drinking like it is the end of the world. And we run into one of her co-workers. Now, I don't really like this chick, and I say that as a firm believer in women supporting women. Um, just having each other's backs, helping each other without 
being judgmental. That's why we're all here tonight for Fem International. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, wow. it's, it's, yeah, right? It's important. Um, that mentality doesn't come naturally to everyone. This was the co-worker's response to hearing my friend's story of heartbreak. Oh no, you broke up. Oh, that's a shame because you really go through a lot of men. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need to put on that extra weight for nothing. Oh. <laughs> I'm reading a Bunker Trump's book at the moment. It is a maze. I'll lend it when I'm done. You have to read it, okay? You have to read it because she wouldn't let, like, that kind of situation bring her down. She would rise above. Oh. I get I get that people like a Bunker Trump. What am I saying? Sorry, that's a lie. Who likes a Bunker Trump? Who is buying this woman's book? What is going on? I, I know, like, it's just my personal opinion, but she is so obviously corrupt, so obviously shady, and you just have to look at her to see that the apple doesn't fall far from the orange. <laughs> okay, there might be some people here tonight that like fake tan, and I'm not, I'm not paying these out or anything. Like, look at me. My foundation shade is somewhere between jellyfish translucent and go to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not paying anyone out here. Um, but yeah, there was another thing about this chick that I didn't like, and I'm not proud to admit it. And I'm not a racist, but she was orange. She was orange. And I don't mean like, oh, she had a bit of fake tan. Like, she was fluorescent orange. Have you seen the orange people? Yes. Okay. All right. Who's fucking the orange people? <laughs> and I mean, apart from whoever they're paying to make them look like that, because they're fucking them big time. I mean, that spray applicator hose might as well just be shaped like a dildo. Like, no, it's very natural. No, it's a natural orange this time. It's natural. Bend over. <laughs> <laughs> so we have this whole plan for tonight. We've got a pub pop right? So I'm not I'm not a club person. I don't like clubs. Um, and it's so funny because I'm always I act, act like too cool for clubs. And it's just the reality of it is I'm too old. That is the thing. I'm just too old for the club scene. It is embarrassing to all involved to take me to a club. This is me at a club. This music. Was it fifty dollars to get in? I didn't get change. I didn't get two. Someone rubbed against me and they were wet. I can't even breathe in here. Can you breathe in here? Like it's just horrific. We're all involved. But I just want my friend to have a good night at a clockwork orange. Convinced my friend to go to this club. I'm a dedicated drinker. Cool. We go to this club. And I'm really glad we did, because it was actually awesome. Like, the vibe was so good. Massive dance floor. Just, like, UV lights, everyone's teeth, and, like, black clothing are glowing. And I look over at my friend, and she's the only one in the sea of people whose teeth aren't glowing. She's got the fake teeth. It's just black. She looks insane. She looks like a jack-o'-lantern. I'm like, whoa. She's like, I said, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, whoa. All right. All right. Yeah. Just, hey, cl close your, yeah. No we spent $50 to get in here. You need to close your mouth. We're going to get thrown out of this place. But it was an awesome night. Hey, I hope you have a really good night too. Remember to donate to fam. Thanks for listening, guys. <laughs> Our next performer, we've got to cast our minds way back to 2013, because that's when this piece is from, all right? Personally, I was a 23-year-old uni student, so I don't really remember much about that year, but collectively, you know, David's going to take us back to that bygone era. Please welcome to the stage, David Glass. Yes, yes, thank you. Another round of applause for Eliza, ladies and gentlemen. He's coming all the way from the New South Wales to be here. Terrific stuff. Anyway, 2013 election year. Is everyone excited about the election? No! Yeah. You lying bastards! Your enthusiasm is electric. Uh, here's how we don't care about politics in this country. You know those shows that hold our leaders into account? Shows like Inside and Meet the Press? All those shows go to air between the prime time, hip and edgy hours, of between 8 and 10 a.m. on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Otherwise known as Regret O'Clock. I don't know about you guys, but on the rare occasion that I'm up before 10 a.m. on a Sunday morning, the questions that I think to myself aren't really, oh, I wonder if the carbon tax is going to affect climate change. How can we approach our asylum seekers while also ensuring our borders remain safe? No, the questions that I seem to be asking myself are, where am I? <laughs> These are lasting a little longer than I expected. 
and how can I make her leave? These are the issues. The <laughs> gear light is nowhere to be seen. It's hard to get passionate about in this country because no one cares. See, I'm a Republican. I think the money goes outdated and not changing anytime soon. Australia's not going to become a Republican anytime soon. We couldn't get rid of plastic bags in this country, let alone the Queen. <laughs> but truly, she's the greatest plastic bag of all. Okay. <laughs> tell me about this, tell me what you think about this. I was on the train the other day, and there was a guy on the other side of the carriage, and when I and it was eating uh, McDonald's chips, chips from McDonald's. And when I watched him, and when everybody else watched him, he just drank his chips. <laughs> you know what I mean? He just tilted the head back, opened up the loading dock, and just like a baby bird bereft of the energy to chew, he just threw the chips down his gullet. And I thought, how tight is your schedule? <laughs> if you're drinking chips from McDonald's on the train, no one's waiting for you. You're, no, you're not in any rush. Centrelink have long lines. You don't need to scull deep fried potatoes like a bogan pelican. What are you doing? <laughs> if you drink your chips, you're gonna spoil your mouth. Just take it nice and slow. And all these restaurants are disgusting nowadays. The only reason I feel comfortable walking into a Red Rooster, Hungry Jacks or a McDonald's on a Saturday night is by knowing that I'm better than 99% of their clientele. You walk into a fancy restaurant, you're scared to use the spoon wrong or whatever. You can walk into a Hungry Jacks on a Saturday night and do a shit in the first aid cupboard and still be nowhere near the worst thing they've ever seen. Oh shit, he's done a shit in the first aid cupboard, but at least he didn't try and fuck the straw dispenser. Tonight's going to be a quiet one, Marie. Thanks very much. Thanks for your time. Enjoy the show. Our next performer is a teacher. And let me tell you, during the rehearsals of her set, I certainly learned a lot. So please welcome to the stage, Eliza Krillin. Thank you very much. Can I start by saying how excited I am to be at the same event as another person named Eliza? <laughs> Doesn't happen very often and I feel like I've found my kindred spirit. I've found the other person who spent uh, primary school writing with a pen that says number one girl instead of their name <laughs> because nothing comes with the name Eliza. But what I'm really um, here to talk to you about tonight is I'm here because I love the internet. And what I really love uh, is the internet, sorry, the information that we wouldn't have if it wasn't for the internet. Those random facts that you know, where do I know it from? Oh, the internet. But what I like to think about are the people who feel the need to contribute that information to society. So who is that person that wakes up in the middle of the night going, oh, the peanut is not a nut, it is actually a legume. Phew, go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> really necessary. <laughs> but the animal facts on the internet are fantastic. I've the animal facts are my favourite. Um, and tonight I've actually brought with me my trusty list of my top five animal facts. Now these facts come from a website called De Deb and Jen's World of Knowledge, that uh, reputable internet source that I'm sure you all go to for all of your facts. <laughs> Number one fact. Just think about the people who wrote these. What were they thinking? Cows can go upstairs, but not down. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, I did actually research this one and it is true. Cows can go upstairs but they can't go down. It's something to do with the way their knees don't oppose. But just imagine the guy that found that out the hard way. <laughs> Alright, Daisy, down the stairs you go. Oh no. I don't go downstairs. I can come up but I don't go down. No, come on Daisy, down the stairs you go. No, I don't go downstairs. My knees. I don't care about your knees. My wife's coming home in five minutes. Get down the stairs. <laughs> You're not going to like it from here. No. Fact number two. Stroking a spider can cause it to go bald. Is that a problem in the arachnid world? I would have thought that was a good thing, like, oh, I'm tough, I'm a skinhead spider. Ugh. But apparently premature spider baldness is an issue. So spider comes home to the web. Hey guys. Hey. What, what are you wearing? Baseball cap. <laughs> what are you wearing that for? Fashion. <laughs> well, you're inside now, take, take it off. No, no, I'll keep it on, I'll keep it on. Take it off, no, I'll keep it off. Have you been letting a human stroke you again? Get out of this web. <laughs> <laughs> Fake 
favourite animal fact number three. <laughs> Koala fingerprints are very similar to human fingerprints. Fair enough. <laughs> so similar that they could be confused at the scene of a crime. <laughs> <laughs> so here's your, uh, your crime scene. Detective turns up. Well, well, well. What have we got here then? Oh, well, boss, you probably shouldn't have even bothered coming. Like, it's an open and shut case. Uh, burglar came in through this window, stole some jewellery, fingerprints everywhere. We'll catch them in no time. Oh, human prints, are they? Okay. <laughs> what are you talking about? No, no, if you think they're human fingerprints, oh, go ahead. Well, if you know something, tell us. Well... It's just that you haven't considered the possibility that it could have been five koala bears standing on each other's shoulders wearing a long coat. <laughs> fact number four, and potentially my favourite fact on this list. The daddy long legs has the most deadly poison known to man. It cannot administer the poison, however, as it has no teeth. What the hell is the point of that? Was it punished in some way? So there's God on the seventh day. He's made all his creatures. He goes, oh, I've got some stringy shit left. A lesser God would have given up. But no, not this one. He goes, no, no, I can do something with this. I can... There. You're a daddy long legs. I'm a what? <laughs> You're a daddy long legs. Not the most attractive of creatures, am I? No, but you can fly. Not really. I just sort of bounce along the ground, a couple of feet in the air, and if I do happen to find a window, I'm there for a good few hours. It's not aviation as I'd wish. <laughs> and these legs, are you sure kids won't pull them off? <laughs> no, no, you're fine, and anyway, I've given you the strongest poison known to man. Really? Brilliant. So if a kid comes along, ha, they're dead. Ha, they'll just be gentle, they're just kids. No, ha, I'm going to take the teeth back. <laughs> <laughs> My final animal fact for you tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Elephants have been caught swimming up to two miles off the coast in the Indian Ocean. That's amazing. I didn't know elephants could swim, and I certainly didn't know they could swim two miles. But it's the language this person uses. Have been caught swimming. <laughs> like it's illegal. <laughs> so here's your Coast Guard. Morning, morning, phone rings, ring, ring. Hello. They've done what? No, I'll be there. <laughs> I'm driving a boat to get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> what, what are you doing? <laughs> What's that? Beach ball? <laughs> well, what are you doing? Swimming. Yes, swimming. Do you have any idea how far you are? No, two miles. Is it? Yes, two miles. Do you have any idea how far? You shouldn't be out here. Do you have two miles? You're not allowed to swim this far. What, what were you thinking? You know you're not meant to be out here. I forgot. Get in the fucking boat. Thank you so much, everyone. Now, just like in any considerate Tasmanian relationship, we've got a brother coming after his sister. Ben Fred. All righty, so... Um, I was told this is quite a open-minded crowd and that there'd be some of the southeast real heavy hitters in the room. Um, and so I'm looking around, I don't see too many. Um, but I decided because of that, I should, write, like, should play a song that really means something. Uh, that's really kind of got a point, um, really quite political. Um, just because, you know, there's so many of you guys in the room. So, this is a song... It's about prejudice. And the... And the language of prejudice. And the power of the language of prejudice. And it's, it's called prejudice. <laughs> 
in our modern free-spoken society. There's a word that we still hold taboo, a word with a terrible history of being used to abuse, oppress and subdue. Just six seemingly harmless letters arranged in a way that will form a word with more power than the pieces of metal that are forged to make swords. Just a couple of G's, an R and an E, an I and an N. Just six little letters all bound all together of course, pain that we may never mend. It's important that we all respect that if these people should happen to choose to reclaim the word as their own, it doesn't mean that you have a right to its use. So never underestimate the power the language imparts, the sticks and stones will break your bones, but words can break hearts. Just a couple of G's, an R and an E, an I and an N. A couple of G's, an R and an E, an I and an N. A couple of G's, G's, unless you've had to live it. An R and an E, even I am careful with it. An I and an N, in the end it will only offend. Don't want to have to spell it out again. Yeah. <laughs> only a ginger. You call another ginger ginger. <laughs> Only a ginger. You call another ginger ginger. <laughs> so listen to me if you care for your health. You won't call me ginger unless you ginger yourself. You know, well, only a ginger. You call another ginger ginger. Yeah, when you're a ginger, laughs pretty hard. Here's a ritual bullying in the schoolyard. The people call you Ranger or Fanta Pants. No invitation to the high school dance, but you get up, you learn to hold your head up. To stand up to the fight and not get fed up. But until the feeling of ill is truly let up. Yeah, the word is ours and ours alone. Don't you know that only a ginger can call another ginger ginger? Only a ginger can call another ginger ginger. So if you call us jeans, we just might come unhinged If you don't have a fringe with a tinge of the ginger in it Only a ginger, you call another ginger ginger Now listen to me when I'm looking for sympathy but Just because we're sensitive to UV Just because we're pathetic, we pay our homes We do alright with the females Yeah, I like to have the ladies round for ginger beer, yeah and soon they're running their fingers through my ginger beard, yeah I'm dunking my ginger nuts into their ginger tea, yeah And I think that they call me ginger I said, come on, what can I do that? Because you know that only a ginger We call another ginger ginger but Only a ginger We call another ginger ginger And all the ladies, they agree it's a fact The once you've gone ginger, you can't go back now we call another ginger ginger. Go you mother funky ginger. <laughs> This is where it gets a bit deep. Yeah, you can call us Bozo or Fire Truck. <laughs> you can even call us Carrot Top or Blood Nut. <laughs> yeah, you can call us Matchstick or Tampon. <laughs> 
suits the day, doesn't it? Like, <laughs> but fucking with the G1 is just not on. If you're a ginger phobe and you don't like us, we will stand up to fight if you want to fight us. But if you cut yourself, you might catch the ginger bite us. So maybe you should shut the funky mouth. Don't you know that only a ginger can call another ginger ginger? Only a ginger can call another ginger ginger. So if you call us ginger, you can't whinge if you're injured. If you don't have a tinge of the ginger in your mingo, oh, only a ginger can call another ginger ginger. And you know my kids are gonna be clothed and fed Cause Papa's gonna be bringing home the gingerbread And they'll be pretty smart cause they'll be well read And by that I mean red and the other kind of red Go yeah, only a ginger Only a ginger ginger Only a ginger Call another ginger ginger Just like only a ninja Can seek up on another ninja <laughs> Only a ginger, only a ginger, yeah, I hope you're listening, I'm not pointing the finger, I'm just having a singer, and I'm just reminding ya, that only a ginger can call another ginger. Ginger. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Our next performer is the second performer of the night who's doing an original set. She's never done it before. She's very funny and we're all so proud of her. Please put your hands together for Bernadette Cullen. Now, are we all having an amazing night? Well, it's great to see that the alcohol is starting to kick in. Uh, it might make my jokes a little bit more funnier. But it is great that we are here tonight raising money for Fem International. It's an amazing organisation helping women in East Africa. I forgot East North, what then? Um, and yet, we all get to come together and have a good laugh. Uh, for the people who I have paid off tonight, <laughs> you do know the laughing cues, so don't leave a girl hanging. <laughs> but for the people who don't know me, I would describe myself as the blue cheese of comedy. <laughs> Not because I feel bad, <laughs> but I am an acquired taste. <laughs> straight into it then, shall we? <laughs> so one of my best friends, one of my bestest, bestest friends that I've known my whole life, has recently started dating this new guy and she is so happy. I haven't seen her this happy in such a long time. Like, how good is the feeling when you see your friends in such, like, such a great spot? Like, am I right? <laughs> anyway, she was showing me the text messages that her and her boyfriend had been sending each other. Don't worry. No dick pics yet <laughs> that I'm aware of, but there has been that, you know, suggestive eggplant emoji going back and forth a few times. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Cheeky. Anyway, I couldn't help but notice at the end of every text message that he sent her, he applied that really expressive winky face <laughs> emoji, like that one, like we all know what I'm talking about, and this one, which is my favourite. <laughs> bit because we don't actually communicate like this in real life and I was like why don't we it would make life a lot more interesting like could you imagine you're at a bar with your friends and you're dancing and you're getting all sexy and you're like all oh, the single ladies all oh, the single ladies and all of a sudden a guy from across the room has seen your sexy dance moves and he comes up to you and he's like hi how are you <laughs> gets better Wait for it. Do -do. Do -do. <laughs> no, not for you, okay. I see you prefer them snipped. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> Alright. So if that would, if you were that person, you'd probably think this guy has some form of brain injury. You look for his owner. <laughs> drink because you're scared of roofy coladas. <laughs> you grab your girlfriends and you'll walk away very slowly because this 
this is not normal behaviour, but it would be so funny if we actually communicated like that in real life. So please, I'm going to hand out my eggplant tonight. Off you go. <laughs> Be one, be one with the eggplants. And please just have a social experiment and just give it a try and let me know how you go at the end of the night. <laughs> okay. So I need some audience participation right now. Um, I'm going to ask you a quick question. And to answer yes, you just got to put your hand up. I won't be judging. Maybe a little bit. No, not really. You are in a safe place. You're around friends, mainly strangers, but friends. <laughs> How many of you take photos of your food? Thank you. Ooh. Okay, yeah, commit, commit. Excellent, I love it. Okay, so about... Some of you went, yes, I take photos of my food. About 60% of you did that. I can't do math. Um, some of you went, like, okay. So of the 60% of you that did put your hand up, in the last six months, when was the last time you swiped back to see the photos of the food that you took? <laughs> Ooh, two of you. Okay, well, well done. Um, see, there's not many of you that actually do it, and like that's my point. Like, I get it. Food is delicious. We need it to live. But I just don't understand the constant need of taking so many photos of blueberry pancakes, smashed avocado, and eggplants. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, like, call me old fashioned. <laughs> but I thought the purpose of photos was to preserve those memories. Look back on your heydays. Remember the times when you went to Europe with your girlfriends and you're like, hashtag YOLO. <laughs> Not to like, think about the food you ate and then a few days later, I don't know, like, like, do you actually think when we're 85, senile, sitting in the old folks home and your grandkids come to visit and you're really excited because Jimmy's coming over and you're like, Jimmy, he's finally here and you're like, Jimmy, 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 come over, sit on grandma's lap, I have something to show you. It was 2015. Hello, you burgers are all Seriously, it's not going to happen, right? Because Jimmy ain't going to come visit me. So, I had a massive, and I mean massive, self-realisation moment. No, I'm sexy. Turn it off, she's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I put lipstick on. Um, so the people that know me, they know this is a rare occasion. <laughs> Court suit. Uh, no, actually, I had this massive, and I mean massive, self-realisation moment. Oopsies. Um, a, 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 about six weeks ago. Um, it was one of those, I'm a self-entitled, see next Tuesday, first world problem moments. Like, just the kind of, you know, picture it in your memory. We all have them, but at least I'm self-aware of it, so, you know, self-improvement. Anyway, I was walking home from the gym. That's right, these sexy dance moves don't come from doing a few squats every now and then. But I actually threw my back out this morning. So I'm not joking, I'm on like a lot of painkillers right now. And um, I was walking home from the gym with that gorgeous man over there, Andrew, and it was like, it was like the really, really first cold day of the year. I was going on about it because it was like, oh, it's freezing, Andrew, it's freezing, because poor Andrew wouldn't have realised this himself, right? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I was about to, as I was about to, like, kick into self-entitlement mode, I was just about to walk past this homeless gentleman who was fast asleep in this industrial-strength-looking sleeping bag. And, uh... But don't worry, I don't go dark. I was about to walk past him and as the self-entitled moment kicked in, I was going to Andrew saying that in a couple of weeks' time, I was going to Sydney for work and that work would be really stingy because they were putting me up in this five-star hotel in the middle of the city but I had to share a room with my colleague. Like, how dare they? I deserve better. 
matter? Like, white lives matter. <laughs> and as I had that self like rural moment, I was about to walk past the homeless gentleman who was fast asleep, and then all of a sudden he's like, Excuse me, guys. I don't mean to interrupt you. But what time is it? Okay, for one very brief moment, I was like, are you late for a job? Do you? <laughs> no. I didn't say that. I'm not that much of an asshole. But I was like, oh, it's 8 a.m. sir. And he's like, thanks very much. He laid back down. He rolled over to get a few more Z's. And as I, as he did that, I cringingly look at Andrew and I was like, I need to shut up. <laughs> Reality is a massive bitch. Yeah. Right? So... As you can probably tell by now, I'm normally a level-headed person. <laughs> I said normally. But I can literally go from zero to crazy cat lady in a matter of seconds <laughs> if I feel like someone's trying to steal my car park at South Melbourne Markets. <laughs> like, I don't know what it is. Like, I think I'm not the only one, but I don't know. Like. I'm not sure if it's the people in their luxury BMWs living around me trying to steal my car spot slash opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> the overpriced vegetables that I continuously pay for week after week. Or if it's the women dressed head to toe in very, very expensive active wares just to walk down to the markets to buy some gluten free bread rolls. <laughs> like, Really? Is that necessary? <laughs> anyway, I'm sitting there in the car thinking about my cherry tomatoes that I need to buy. Start hulking up because I think someone's trying to steal my spot. <laughs> I'm not a superhero, I'm just trying to park the car. And at the end of last year, I lost my shit. <laughs> because someone stole my spot. I was like, don't fuck! Like, I said god awful things to this person, things I wouldn't say to my worst enemy, things I'm not willing to say on stage tonight. I really, really scared myself that day, but the worst thing about it, I wasn't even driving. So, I'm all about self improvement, so I was like, you know what, Burns? For the better good of the community, how about you catch the tram moving forward to go to the markets? <laughs> I talked myself out of that moment very quickly because I live in St Kilda, so I had to catch the number 96 up. The um, people are gross. People are disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of times I've seen people cut their toenails on the tram oh, no. is way too many times for one single lifetime. Like, I get it. It needs to be done, but there is no need, and I mean no need, for hashtag tram petties. <laughs> Not needed. Hashtags? I hate them. I hate them almost as much as I hate people trying to steal my car spot. I know what they're there for, I understand the purpose, but I really think, I think, I really think they are the silliest part of social media. Like, I, I really doubt someone sitting there going, hmm, I got it. I'm gonna look up, hashtag leg day. <laughs> like, no one's doing that. And if you need to do more than three hashtags, to let the world know that you were just at the gym and now that you're leaving the gym. One, it's a little excessive. Why three? One would have done the job. Two, kind of conceited. And three, it's one of the saddest things we as humans are doing right now. Right? No, actually, I take that last point back. The saddest thing we're doing as humans right now is when you realise you've gobbled up all your food and you haven't taken a photo of it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a wonderful night. Uh, our next comedian has some more dating opinions to discuss with you. Uh, come on out, Colin. Please make welcome, Colin Asley. Thank you, darling. Thank you. 
Hello everyone. How's your night going? Good? Good? That's good. So, I don't really know how to start a stand-up set. I'm just sort of supposed to come up here and start talking, but there's no real reason for me to talk to you. Like, you don't know me. Most of you don't know me. I don't know you. Um, most of you don't even know each other. In fact, the only thing that you have in common is that you're all facing in the same direction. It's a bit of a strange kind of setup we've got going at the moment, but I think together we're going to make it through, I hope. You guys have been pretty good so far from what I've heard. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's quite an awkward situation. It's kind of like trying to start a conversation with a stranger, but to the power of about 110. Uh, now, it's especially difficult when that stranger is attractive. Uh, because all you can really think about is that you want them to sit on your face, you know, and you just can't, you just can't, um, you can't, you want to be honest with people, you know, but I've accepted a long time ago, you can't actually be honest with people the first time that you interact with them. You have to say anything other than, I want you to suffocate me, you know, you just can't, you can't not lie. And it's awful. Why do we make these rules for ourselves? Anyway, yeah, look, that, that brings me to my next topic. And it's a topic that I don't think has received sufficient attention in stand-up. Uh, and that's the area of dating. So it's really been sadly neglected, but I'm going to offer a few observations for you. So dating, and between men and women specifically. Uh, yes, I can tell you're on the edge of your seats. So, look. Dating is awful. It's a, it's a fucking shit show. I mean, I'm sure you all know. Um, now, working out, if you're a guy, working out what to say to a woman is awful. But the date itself is beautiful, you know? When I see two people who look like they're on a first date, I think it's beautiful. You know, my heart skips a beat. Um, it's just lovely. The cockles are warmed. Now... If you see two people on a date, the reason why it's so beautiful is because there's still courage in the world. You know, that's what it means to me. But they're two different, very, very different types of courage. So under the traditional model, and this is going to be appallingly heteronormative, uh, the guy has decided to speak to this woman that he does not know. He doesn't know how she's going to react, uh, whether she's going to like him or not. He has no clue just kind of sidling up, or the digital equivalent of sidling up. <laughs> and he's just, I don't know, he just spouts some dog shit. You know, like how I, how I started. You know, you just, you just say some shit. Um, so he's like, hi. And she's like, Ugh. And he's like, oh, wait, wait, give me a second, please. <laughs> And he's going to make his way through this like, membrane of shit. And if he can get it out, he'll say, do you want to grab a drink sometime? And if she says yes, that's her courage. If you thought it took courage for him to come up and say that, her courage is out of the ballpark. It is just unbelievable. A woman saying yes to a date with a man is extremely ill-advised. <laughs> and just... Insane. <laughs> really, if you think about it, men are the number one threat to women worldwide yes. and throughout the span of history. Yes. And I don't understand how you do it. No woman that I have met can explain it to me. Why do you do it? I mean, granted, more or less, the survival of the entire human race depends on it happening at least some of the time. But it is insane. We're the number one threat. Now, just as a sidebar, do you know what the number one threat to men is? Heart disease. <laughs> so, literally, this guy's own heart is trying to take him out. He's that much of a piece of shit. He's just said, dude, I tried to tell you two strokes ago, you couldn't keep doing this. But you just don't listen. Anyway. So the woman, she says, yes. I'll go out alone with you at night? Are you fucking insane? Do you watch the news? It's just fucking incredible. So look, she'll, she'll go and she'll sit next to him in his car or like a new brand. 
Hey, where are we going? <laughs> to your horrifying death, statistically. <laughs> like, guys, imagine... Imagine if the only category of, of entity that you could date was like a giant fucking carnivorous animal, you know, eight foot tall, like roided, and just, you know, like megafauna. You know, you know those things that died out like tens of thousands of years ago, we don't see them anymore, we killed them for good reasons, right? Imagine if that's the only thing you could date, you'd just be like, um, well, shit, I hope he's nice, you know? <laughs> It's just absolutely bananas. So look, that's why I'm a lesbian. That's not a joke, but really, I am a lesbian. Well, okay, I, I would be a lesbian. I would prefer to be a lesbian. Ask anyone that I know, they'll say yes, Colin would prefer to be a lesbian. And that's for very good reason. See, not only are men dangerous and stupid, they're also disgusting, right? In terms of aesthetics, it just, like, what are you thinking? Like, look at this. It's like, you know, there's like hair here and here, and it smells bad, and this part smells worse, and the hair here falls out, and this bit gets gross, and... It's just... It's foul. What are you thinking? So, look. I've tried to come up with a solution. And I'm a solution-oriented kind of guy, okay? I just want you to understand that. Um, and I think the only solution is to kill all men. Um, now look, I've put a lot of thought into this. It doesn't necessarily have to be all men. Just, I don't know, you don't have, you don't have to kill them violently. Just find a way to make them go away. You know, technology hasn't really caught up with me on this one yet. But when it gets there, I think you'll see where I'm coming from. And I think you see how beautiful it could be if, you know, they're just mostly no men. Um, so, look, uh, what I'm thinking is we clear the men all out of all of the cities and towns um, and we set aside maybe like an island somewhere where they can't cause too much harm and we just keep them there, right? Sort of like Jurassic Park, but for dudes, right? Now... There's one good reason to keep men around, and that's sperm, okay? I understand that, I'm not an idiot. All right, we do need them for some things. So I, I figure we turn, or we install like a giant fleshlight in the middle of the Grand Prix circuit, right? And all the men that we've got there, you know, just sort of line them up, they do their business, the bell rings, truck comes in, Collects it, goes out, and you know, goes and visits all the beautiful lesbian couples that want to have children. Um, yes. I think I think that's how to make it work. Now, it could also. So I'm thinking Phillip Island, right? It could be like. <laughs> I, it could be like. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, sort of like a a holiday destination as well. You know, a little bit risque. Sort of. I don't know. It's a little bit perverse, kind of like how Bali or Bangkok are now, but like, the opposite, right? You know, a couple of girlfriends having a chat. So Don, what are you doing this summer? Just going to Phillip Island, you know, try something a bit different. Oh, sounds like fun. Well, let me know how it goes. Oh shit, sorry. I'm so sorry. I've just... Don't ruined the ending of Wonder Woman. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. And now we have the final performer of the night. The woman of the hour. The woman who made all of this possible. She organised the whole thing. The one, the only, Chloe Douglas. Sorry about that. Oh god. I'm just um I'm not really good at taking a compliment. Um I think it's a really Australian thing to like deflect compliments and put yourself down instead. Just like, oh thank you, no I'm shit. <laughs> I'm shit, fuck you. No, fuck you, I'm shit, shut up. <laughs> and I'm um, I'm quite concerned that like one day I just won't be able to stop. 
Like, one day I'll have a child and someone will be like, Oh, Chloe, I heard you had a baby. And I'll be like, yeah, just a shit one. <laughs> have you seen it? It's got beady eyes. <laughs> it's probably going to grow up to be a parking inspector. Do you want it? <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't have any children <laughs> that I know of. Oh, I could have been drunk for a year. Oh. <laughs> I do get off my face. <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry, off your face isn't drunk. I just, um, I just like the term off your face better. I also like off your tits, as in I was off my tits. <laughs> Can't say I've ever been so drunk that someone said, Chloe, where are your tits? <laughs> and I said, I don't know, off. They can do what they like, I'm not their real dad. <laughs> I do drink a lot. <laughs> uh, if you, I like to drink alone a lot. If you feel bad for me, don't. I like it. <laughs> I've been known to be at a party, like such, where I'm having a good time and I'll say, guys, I've got to go. And they'll say, well, you got work in the morning. I'll say, no. I just want to continue this without you guys. <laughs> dating strangers for the first time in my life. Oh, bullshit. Oh, no. <laughs> not like complete strangers. Like I'm not going up to someone in the cinema and saying, hey, so happy we're doing this. <laughs> no, but seriously, guys, dating is the worst. <laughs> dating is, I mean, I know Colin went into it, but I'll go into it from a female perspective. <laughs> literally going up to someone that you do not know and saying, mm, what do you think of this? <laughs> no? No? <laughs> yeah? Yeah, <fuck> it. <laughs> no, but seriously, <laughs> fuck, got my line. <laughs> no, there's, uh, there's dating, yeah, there's dating. Uh, there's dating and there's encounters. Um, and I had an encounter recently, this is a personal story. Um, I had a gentleman over at my home and, um, sorry mum, <laughs> uh, we were, um, encountering, <laughs> and I wasn't enjoying it, like I wasn't feeling it, wasn't feeling the vibe, and I said, look, you're going to have to go, um, and he said, really, seriously, I've got work just around the corner in the morning, can I just stay, can I, can I stay, and I said, well, I guess you can stay, yeah, sure, you can stay, and so he goes into the bathroom, and he's gone for, you know, an awkward amount of time, <laughs> What is happening? Who is this man? Like, what's he doing in my bath? And anyway, I go in, go in to see what's happening, and he's standing by the washing machine, and um, <laughs> he's putting all of his clothes into the washing machine. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, and I said, "Hey, you, um, <laughs> what are you doing?" <laughs> and he said, "Oh, I'm just washing my clothes. I stink of cigarettes and alcohol, you know." I said, "Oh yeah." <laughs> Oh yeah? Why are you putting your shoes in? <laughs> said, well, because they stink as well. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> right, right. So we go into my bedroom and we lay down and I'm thinking, what in the frick have I done here? Anyway, we're lying there. I can hear the sound of the shoes clunk, 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 in my washing machine. And I'm thinking, you know what, just go to sleep. Regrets are regrets. It'll be fine in the morning. And I feel him moving over closer towards me and I said, hey! Look, buddy, I said no, and that's a no. And he said, oh, well, what am I doing here? I don't really understand what the purpose of me being here is then. Why am I here? And I said, well, that's a good question. It'd be really great if you can leave. There's just one problem. Your clothes are in the washing machine. <laughs> yeah. So we get up, and um, I'm sifting through my wardrobe, and I get in my old uh, nice soccer uniform. <laughs> And uh, we lay back on top of the covers awkwardly in silence, listening to the 45-minute uh, wash cycle coming to its... <laughs> I grab out a plastic bag or two and put the clothes into the bag and send him on his way. That's encounters. <laughs> so if you've got love, funny, good on you. Good on you. That's awesome. But if you are in a relationship, and you think that something funny happened to you? It didn't. <laughs> like, like, oh, you're an Ikea for how many hours? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you got one of those flat pack, um, see? Mm, yeah, oh, you try to 
meatball? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm just going to cut off my ears. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. was me <laughs> being so with the The washing machine is freaking true. <laughs> that happened to me. Guys, I cannot thank you all enough for being here tonight. I'm so uh, warmed in the heart for you all being here. Uh, I've got some special mentions, which I believe that Claire is going to do, but just personally, my MC, freaking give it up for my MC. Those yeah. no pants, hello. Uh, just so many people to thank. Uh, all the comedians just g gave up their time and they did this for me. I've had people behind the scenes. I've realised that I've pretty much got someone who works in every profession to help me <laughs> with everything. So I'm friggin' lucky you're all here. I don't even know some of you, which makes me feel like this is a good event because, like, who are you? That's great. For coming. Thank you for coming here. <laughs> thank you for doing this for an awesome cause. And keep drinking because money keeps coming to the organisation and keep ordering pizzas because they're open till 12. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yeah.